Hey y'all, it's Sam. I got a request on how to make the full page flags and the half boxes that specifically had this white area in the middle for writing, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And I went ahead and just made some so you can see what they look like. Um, these are the full page flags. They'll take up the whole box in the morning, day, and night for the Erin Condren Life Planner. These are the half boxes, and I went ahead and go ahead and made um, quarter page flags too. And I went and I downloaded just an image from Google of an Erin Condren Life Planner page just and put them in here just so you could see the size and um, how they would fit because I know a lot of people when they make it they can't really visualize what it'll look like in the planner so I just dropped those in there so you could see it ahead of time so let's get started let's start with the full page flags I'm just gonna zoom in so it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing um, go up here and you're going to select your draw rectangle tool and just draw any shape of rectangle. I've said it in previous videos how to do the scale, but I'm going to show you guys again. So click on your rectangle, come up here to the scale window, and we're going to change the dimensions of this to fit inside the morning, day, and night boxes, which are 1.5 inches by 1.9 inches. I like to make mine a little bit smaller though, so it doesn't overlap the border of the box and you have a little sliver of white. So I'm going to make my width 1.45 inches and my height 1.85 inches, and that just leaves that little bit of white around it. So now I'm going to just line it up so this middle box is right on a line, and I'm going to use that grid line as a guideline. You're going to come up here and hit Edit Points, and with your rectangle selected, you're going to click on that line that we just lined it up with, so it makes a point right in the middle and you're just going to drag it up and again you can make this as high or as low as you want it's your preference just make sure you drop that box right on that middle line and now we have a page flag that is the size of the Erin Condren morning day and night boxes so to add pattern to this I just went ahead and found a bunch on Google um, if you have a website you like or if you buy them off silhouette that's on your own personal preference I can do another video later on how to import files but I just imported a bunch of them so with your shape selected go to wherever you have your patterns and I have all of mine in my library so I'm just gonna select one and I like this one so with that selected, it's actually going to fill it in and give you one off to the side as well. So you can just go ahead and delete that pattern that pops up. And now you have your page flag with a nice pattern in it. And I'm going to come up here to the lines, and I don't really want a line color, this red line. If you want a black line around it, that's fine. If you don't want any color or whatever color you want, I'm just going to put mine transparent for now. So to get that white area right in the middle, I'm just going to copy this and make another one. So right click copy, right click paste, and that's just going to make another box. And while you have your fill window selected, just make it white. And then you're going to shrink it down a little. doesn't have to be a specific size. We're going to change that in a minute. So then you're going to line it up. You want to make sure that the top of this point is centered with, uh, actually, you know what, we'll just select both of them and come up here, and you're going to hit align center. And that's going to do it for you, so you don't have to manually center them. Then you're just going to drag the corner for however big you want it. That looks about right. All right, so with that selected still, you're going to come up to um, your fill color, and you're going to go to advanced options. And under advanced options is transparency. So you are going to grab this little blue triangle and drag it until it's the transparency that you want. You can also do this with other colors. It doesn't have to be white. I think 20 is about good. So there you have your first full page planner or um, page flag for your planner. And just go ahead and select both of them and group them together just so if you click it, they don't get separated. And now I'm going to show you how to make the half page uh, boxes. And just come up and you can do draw rectangle or draw rounded rectangle, um, either or, it's personal preference, and just make whichever size you want. And you're going to select it and come back up to the scale window. And we are going to, once again, change the width and the height. The width is going to be 1.45 inches, so you have that little bit of room. The height is actually going to be half of the 1.9 inches, so that's 1.5 inches. 
excuse me, that's 0.95, and that's going to be half the size. So again, you're just going to come up and, oops, with it selected, go to library and pick a pattern. And you can delete that pattern that pops up. And I'm also going to change the line color to transparent. So just like the other one, copy and paste it. And you can um, actually control C and control V for the keyboard commands for copy and paste. And we're going to make this white and shrink it down just a little so we can see it in there and make it however big or small as you want in your box and then I'm going to center that again there we go and we'll select it again and come back up to the fill and you're going to make it a little bit transparent however much you want that one looks good and then select both of them and group and there you have your um, half box and the quarter size page flags are made the same way as the large ones except you just half both dimensions so you're going to divide 1.5 and half and 1.9 and half and use those as the dimensions instead of 1.9 and 1.5 uh, so uh, a lot of questions i get is after i make these people post how do i actually do the cut settings for this so i'm just going to go ahead and show you that too um, just so you guys all know. So you're going to come up to your little cut settings icon up here and right now it's cutting this inside box and the outside one and we don't want that on both of these. So go ahead and select both of these and right now it's set to cut and what we want is just for the edge to be cut. So you come up here and you click cut edge and right now now it's going to cut just the edge out and I don't always like to do that because sometimes my silhouette is off a little bit um, and it will cut half of this and then have a huge white mark so I just go ahead and offset everything and if you don't want to offset this is fine you're done you can send it to silhouette um, just make sure when you do that you come all the way down and hit white sticker paper or whatever uh, medium you're working with if you double click it it'll open up your cut settings you can leave the oops the ratchet blade on too I usually do but I already had come in here and changed this. It's usually um, up at 8 and the thickness is at 14. For your speed, when you're working around corners, I always turn the, thick, or the speed way, way down because if it goes too fast, that's when it's going to peel up those corners while it's cutting it. Um, and I always change the thickness down to a 5 because that's what's going to give you that kiss cut. If you like your stickers cut all the way through, go ahead and turn it back up to 10. Um, but if you just want a kiss cut, you definitely want to have 5 or below for the thickness on your sticker paper. So for those of you who do want to offset this, you just go ahead and you select your uh, shape and you're gonna come up to this offset window and you're gonna hit offset. And you're not gonna be able, oh, it, it did show it. It didn't show it when I did it before. Um, usually when you have a white line, it doesn't show it because it can't push the line out, but this one, it did work. Um, this is a little big for me though. I don't really like that much white space around it. So I'm going to change it to my lucky number, which is 0.066, and that's just enough white space for me. And now, as you see, it's cutting that offset, and it's not cutting right up against it. So you can go ahead and send this to your silhouette. Um, it's all ready to go. Just make sure you load your mat correctly and have a good amount of light in there for it to read. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please don't hesitate to comment below. And please subscribe so you can continue to see uh, amazing things that you can do with your silhouette program. Thanks, guys.